Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this great Wednesday. Uh, my name is Erin Kopech, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I am the VP of Marketing with Higher Level, a human capital management company, and you have joined our High Notes program. Uh, we've been, I've been running this program for about nine years now, so we do this monthly program for you all to help educate, um, kind of spread the love of connections that we have throughout the community and um, really to share valuable information for you as business owners or hiring professionals, um, recruiters, accounting, all of that good stuff. And so I have Keisha Kent joining us today and she's gonna talk with us and share some of her great nuggets and energy about building and maintain, maintaining uh, diverse teams. So a few things before we get started, this call will last, um, it'll be less than an hour, but everyone is set up in listen only mode and uh, someone did say they can't hear. So Keisha, can you hear me okay? I can hear you, yes. All right, can anybody else? Joe, Nikki, can you hear me? Just wanna make sure our audio is good to go today. All right, sounds like everybody is good on hearing. Um, Heather, can you hear me okay? All right, great. Well, before we get started, uh, we will, uh, like I said, this will be less than an hour. You are set up in listen only mode, but you do have the functionality to chat, ask questions um, at the bottom of your GoToWebinar panel. Feel free to utilize that uh, to ask Keisha questions, interact um, as much as you can. We would love that. And uh, let's get started. So Keisha is the CEO and founder of Miss. Keish Speaks LLC. Uh, Keisha is a wife, mother, a very high energy speaker, which I love, and a best selling <laughs> author, podcast host, and diversity and inclusion leader with As Ascension Healthcare. She has over 20 years of human resource, recruitment, agency staffing, training, and development experience in healthcare, IT, and the sales industry. Ms. Keisha holds a bachelor's degree in management and leadership in a master's in organizational leadership, both from Judson University in Elgin, Illinois. She's the new author of the Amazon number one new release, Networking, It's Your Superpower, released uh, June 10th, 2020, and a new podcast, Networking is Your Superpower. Her board experience includes uh, Judson University Alumni Board, St. Louis Organization Development, and TEDx St. Louis. Thank you, Keisha, for joining us, and I turn it over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Erin, I can't see the people. Do I get to see the people? So I don't think they have their cameras on. They're being shy okay. today. So you guys are being shy? You. What is up with that? Well, if you have capability to turn your camera on, I would love to, love to, love to, love to see your face. Thank you so much, Erin, and thank you for this opportunity. I love, love, love all things, relationships and people. You guys know that I am such a fan of higher level and all things higher level. One of the things I want to do when we get this thing kicked off this morning is really make sure that we are providing for each other grace and faith. And when I think about grace and faith, I want you to really, 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 first of all, give yourself grace, right? Because we tend to give everyone else grace, but grace starts with self. When the word grace comes to mind, if you guys could in the chat, tell me what you're thinking when you hear the word grace. What comes to mind when you think of the word grace? What comes to mind when you think of the word grace? And I'll kick it off. When I think of the word grace, I think of allowing people to be who they are, to express themselves fully without any of my preconceived notions and judgments and all of those things. What do you guys think when you think of the word grace? Anybody? I would love to see your comments in the chat. What do you think when you think of the word grace? Yeah, this is Erin. I think uh, being open-minded is something I think yeah. of and uh, just willing to uh, think and feel that, being open-minded. That's it. That's so good. And that's at the end of the day, that's exactly what it is that we need to do is really be open-minded. So I would implore everyone here to be open-minded, but know that this is a conversation where there's give and take, right? So I am going to ask several times, tell me in the chat, 
or Aaron, if they can unmute themselves, that is also okay as well. What I want to do is really make sure that we're creating dialogue because this is not the Keisha show. This is all the things that you guys need. And I want to make sure that I'm offering you an opportunity to really ask questions and get into a space of just understanding. Okay. So let's kick this thing off. I'm grateful this morning again for the opportunity and I love, love, love all things relationships. So let's kick it off. Okay. So when you think about, let me see here. There we go. So here's, here's what I want you to think about. Everything that we do, we should know that diversity makes for a rich tapestry, bottom line. And we must understand that all the threads of the tapestry are equal, no matter what the color are. Everything is equal. And that's a quote from Maya Angelou. What I want to do really quick, Erin, is I'm going to change my view just a quick second. Hold on. Because I didn't put my notes in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to switch it up just a minute. Bam, there we go. Let me know that you guys can see my screen. Yes, we sure can. You guys can. see my screen? Okay. Yes. Fabulous. <laughs> so listen, when we think about diversity, I want to give you just a few points of why diversity matters. Wait a minute, my screen's doing something weird. Nope, that's not what I want. Why is it doing that? That's weird. Okay, let me see something really quick. Okay, now I can see. Can you see my screen, Erin? Yes. Okay, fabulous. <laughs> Did I turn my camera off? Is everything still rolling good? All good. Fabulous. Okay. So here's a couple of examples of what diversity is, and I want to just throw these out there first. There's cultural diversity, racial diversity, religious diversity, age diversity, sex and gender diversity, sexual orientation, as well as disability diversity. And the reason that it matters is because one of the things that we get to do as individuals is we get to show up as our full selves when there is a space for us to do so. Okay? I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Bam. Okay. So here's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. So we'll talk about inclusion, which is typically the ways that we create, the ways that we connect, the ways that we get to all those things of including individuals, giving them a space where everyone's welcome. We'll talk about creating space. And when I think about creating space, here's what that is, really making sure that individuals belong. And when you think about the word belonging as an action word, what that does is that it says everyone, again, has an opportunity to show up as who they are. And then we'll talk a little bit about bias, cultural bias and same versus famous. And when we think of those terms, I want you to think of it from a perspective of when we think cultural, sometimes what happens is the word cultural excludes people. Sometimes what it does is it takes people out of the loop because we're looking for people who, are, who look like us, people that act like us, people that do the same things that we do. But I'll implore you today to really look at how you want to think outside of the box to create spaces where everybody doesn't look alike, where there's diversity of thought. And diversity of thought is the key here. And the last thing that we'll talk about today is taking action. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I'm getting a notification saying that we're experiencing difficulties. Okay, great. And the last thing we'll talk about is taking action where we will uproot talking about those policies, talking about those practices and ways that we can then move forward in all of these different practices, okay? All right, so first and foremost, when I think about the word community, everything that we do is relational. And how, how do we create inclusion within our team? Key word, 
relational. Everything that we do is community, right? Community. We all want to be included. We all want to have that feeling of this space has been created for me and mine. And the way that we do that is we look at it from this perspective, developing a positive mindset, positive attitude with those individuals. Here's the first thing, treating everyone with respect, bottom line, practicing active listening. And I'll say this, and I need to say that, because when we think about listening, I want to be sure that we're listening to understand, not listening to respond, because we do it. It's just a given that we listen to respond. But I want us to uproot that and think about how we listen to understand and then think about all the ways that we get to connect on a personal level within teams people show up because they feel connected bottom line and they stop showing up when they stop feeling connected right here's the other thing i want us to think about is how do we develop relationships outside of the work that we do as we get to build relationships with individuals on our teams outside of work getting rid of all of the things that we do within the workspace, but getting to a personal level is really key in creating diversity and maintaining those teams, right? Here's the other thing I want us to think about. Think of the larger goal of the organization and think of how we can start now building from a space where we're saying, you're welcome. We appreciate you. Thank you. Those are some of the smallest things that we can do, but those are some of the greatest impacts that we get to make. Now, I want to just pause right there to see if there's anything, any questions on anything so far, giving you guys an opportunity to chime in as needed. Okay, no questions? Anything you see in the chat, Erin? Nope, I think it looks like everybody's good. Fabulous. Okay. Inclusion. What's the purpose of inclusion? That's, the, that's been a golden question these, these days. What's the purpose of it? Here's the thing I want you to think about. Inclusion is the culture, right? There's that word culture again, in which the mix of people can come to work, right? Feel comfortable, confident, and be themselves. Because here's this, once we get an opportunity to work in a way that suits us, we will deliver all those needs that the business has, right? Inclusion will ensure that everyone is safe. And there's the thing, once we create that sense of safety, what it does is it adds value. But it says to an individual that I can show up as my full self. Here are some ways that you can create inclusion within your teams. Number one, hope you guys are taking notes. Celebrate diverse holidays. Celebrate diverse holidays. I'm not sure if you knew that the, we just celebrated the Global Diversity Awareness Month. And when you think about all of those things on a global scale, as an organization, it really allows individuals to feel connected to the organization when you say, hey, we're thinking about you as we do these celebrations. Think about all the different religions. Everybody doesn't have the same religion, and we know that. But when we celebrate certain religions, without having a consensus of what the religions are of everyone, there's an opportunity there to exclude people. So I just want you to think about that in the process. Here's the other thing that is really important that has worked, creating a buddy system. As individuals start training and getting into your new team, you can assign someone to that individual that is set up to provide resource, right? someone they can ask questions to, someone they can keep in tact with. And the thing is, it starts oftentimes with organizations, maybe in those first, maybe two weeks or 30 days, but I implore you to keep that through the life of that employee because what will happen is, again, that person, feel, that person feels connected and they see that, okay, someone else is concerned about my growth and even tweaking the training because not everyone has a start, the same learning capacity. And this has been something that has been a buzzword lately, the word neurodiversity. And as we think about neurodiversity, what it says is everybody learns different. ADHD is under that umbrella. Autism is under that umbrella. And when we think about all of those creatives and how they think, 
we have so much capacity when we look at the fact that everybody thinks different. But when we create our training methods and processes around all of these things, now we get to a point of allowing people to connect and really feel like there's a sense of inclusion, okay? The other thing I want us to think about is how do you incorporate diversity within your policies, within your teams, within all of your products, the things that your company does, the verbiage that you use when you're speaking to your clients, your employees, the verbiage that you use really speaks volumes and also says to individuals, hey, you're welcome, and we thought about you as we did this. And then the other thing is this, ask for feedback. Implore your diverse candidates and applicants. Once you hire them, that individual can become a resource for you. But ask for feedback. Ask them about recommendations that they think should be made. Ask them about ideas. Ask them all the things that you have already in place. And then ask, how does this include you or how does it exclude you? One of the things that we've done as an organization within Ascension is listening sessions. And we did it for over 120,000 employees. But to get the data and see the trends, the big thing is, is people want to be asked simple. What works? What doesn't work? Asking goes a long way. And oftentimes what's happening is organizations are simply assuming. But when we assume, you guys know that saying, right? When we assume, we're not getting to what we want to get to, okay? Here's the other thing that you can do. Use anonymous recruiting. And here's what I mean by that. When we use anonymous recruiting, what you do is you create other outside entities that could hire for you if that's a, if that's a possibility. So say when there's a high hiring source or hiring spurt, I should say, implore and get other organizations that can then do that. Of course, laying out your stipulations and what you're looking for in, in the actual position. But that gives you another opportunity to get outside of that hiring process. The other thing is this, invest in training. Those are the individuals that you get in, diverse candidates, invest in their training, invest in the development, and invest in all those things of really building up individuals internally. Because as you build them internally, what you then do is you create a space of loyalty. And people are loyal. But here's the other thing. People don't quit companies. They don't. They quit managers. And I'm sure you probably have heard that term over and over and over. And let me just say this as well. Some of the things I'll say you probably already heard. And here's my disclaimer. This isn't the end all be all that I have. But what I'll do is, of course, continue to give you ways that have worked with so many of my clients that I work with, with as well as the organization that I work in as well. These are tips and tools, okay? So disclaimer, this isn't the end all tell all, okay? Here's the next thing I want you to think about. In this day and age, we're using a lot of augmented reality. Think about AI, right? And Int artificial intelligence. We're using AI to do a lot of things, but if we reprogram what we're looking for, then we can get back what it is that we're wanting to gauge as we look at those individuals, okay? All right, so I'm gonna keep going. I don't see anything in the chat. And stop me if you need me to stop, okay? Here's what I want you to think about when it comes to your company and the future. It depends on you. It's now time that we look at the hiring process, the promotion, as well as the leadership. When I say the hiring process, here's what I mean, and I'll give you an example. Over at Duke Manufacturing, one of the things that they do, Duke Energy, I should say, one of the things that they do is the managers and the HR team, what they do is they go through and they identify individuals that they think could be successors in specific roles. And one of the things that they do when they do that is they submit a list of, the managers do, submit a list of individuals that they have. And then what happens with that list is it's passed over to human resources. Once human resources gets that list, what they do is then they go on top of that list and they, they run another query within the organization to look at people that those managers didn't select. And what that does is that minimizes the level of bias that could possibly happen. Because here's the thing, when we have certain relationships, we're going to pin those people that we have relationships to, to leadership, to the promotion, all those things. 
But when we think outside the box and do things like they're doing at Duke Energy, we, we look at the list of the, the individuals that the managers brought and then looking at the list of the list that HR pulls. And what that does is couple those lists together and then you can create more of an opportunity to promote and offer leadership to those individuals within. That's one of the biggest things that I really want to just kind of focus on because, again, typically we promote people based on relationships. But think about for large organizations or middle-sized companies, you may not have a relationship with every individual or you may not know them, but offering a different process will say, okay, we're going to bring other individuals to the table and then give them an opportunity as well. So think about that. And then here's the other thing with the leadership. Once you recognize valuable employees, you have to make sure that you're developing them. When you develop those individuals, of course, again, that creates the relationship and that leverages the loyalty that you have within that space as well. Now, I'm going to keep going. I hope I'm not moving too fast. I have so much that I want to give you guys, but I'm going to make sure that I slow down here so you can just kind of take it all in. The biggest thing that I want us to think about in relating building and keeping those relationships is appreciation. Now, appreciation is a simple thing that we can do, but we often get away from it because we're so busy. There's things like kudo boards. What a kudo board is, all of the company has access to the board where individuals can go out and they can give recognition and thank individuals for the work that they do. It's so simple, but what it does is it raises the energy and the appreciation for those people that you're doing it for, that it really allows them an opportunity to feel that you appreciate them. When people feel appreciated, you know what they do is they show up. They do all sorts of things. They refer people and they say they're loyal. And that's the biggest thing that we want is loyalty at the end of the day. There's a framework that we use at Ascension. It's called ABIDE. A-B-I-D-E. And the A stands for appreciation. The B stands for belongingness. The I is for inclusivity. The D is for diversity. And the E is for equity. And everything that we do is ingrained into, those, into that process. The policies, the hiring procedure, the hiring manager toolkits, the leader kits that we've created to make sure that individuals are in the process of creating, again, a space of appreciation. And again, what it does is it builds loyalty. And at the end of the day, isn't that what we're looking for? To build loyalty. Okay, so let me keep going. Okay, the second thing that on a point I want you to think about is creating space and safety. Now, how do you do that, you ask? That's a great question. One of the ways that you can do that is all those other pieces that I mentioned, but you create safety by doing this, allowing individuals to come to the table as their full selves. I pause there. Allowing individuals to come to the table as their full selves, their religion, their background, all of their experience, their expertise, their strengths, and their skills. One of the things that we've done so often in different teams is we've done the strength finder as a team. We've done personality test as a team. And what that does is that gives you an idea of how individuals tick, how they learn, how they create, how they come to the table and win for the organization. There's a one personality test I want to give you. Not sure if you guys are familiar with it. It's called the True Colors personality test. And what True Colors does is it allows you to really get an idea of those individuals. And what it does is it helps you to come to the table to now see individuals from their strengths and how they operate. And what it does is it allows people to, again, come to the table as their full selves. But now you know who to rely on for certain things. Are they analytical? Are they people friendly? Are they winning others over? Are they sales? Are those things, all of those things that you think about are ways that you can continue to build upon creating space. So that's a big way of creating space and safety, again, by allowing people to show up as them full selves. And when they do that, again, it creates loyalty. I'm going to keep saying loyalty because that's at the end of the day, we want our business needs to go up and we want loyal employees. Here's some stats I want to share with you guys. Here's some stats. Oh, these are good stats. And I want you to really just kind of focus on these right now. 
because 87% of diverse teams are making, wait a minute, <laughs> diverse teams are better at making decisions and finding solutions. 87% of those, that's 87% when we think about the stats and how it is. When you think about all those things that come to the table, 87%. They're higher in making all of those decisions, finding solutions. When teams are diverse, it's 87% more likely to get done, right? 15% of gender, think about gender diverse teams, have higher performance. It, it just is. And here's the thing. Inclusive companies are 120% likely to hit their financial goals. Not 100%. 120%, tell me if that's not exactly the goal, to hit those goals. Think about that, okay? I want you guys to think about this when it comes to what job seekers are looking for. 70% of them say, listen, we're looking to see a company's commitment to diversity. At the end of the day, isn't that important? So if 70% of people are looking for that, how much more viable is it when you get an opportunity to be a productive team? 70% of job seekers are looking for a company's commitment to diversity. It's an important thing. It is. Here's what I want you to think about. It, does, it doesn't cost an HR team anything to go in, go through the job description, and create a statement in the job description that says, at this company, we want to be inclusive and promote belongingness. It costs zero cents to do that. So I implore you, if you have not put a statement like that in your job description, go in and just say, again, at this company, we want to be inclusive and promote belonging. That's it. It sounds so simple. It goes a long way. Individuals are looking to see that, okay? Okay, so I'm going next. All right. Oftentimes, instead of us thinking about inclusion, inclusion, diversity, here are the top three things that we're promoting. These are great. Don't get me wrong, because people look for these things. But here's the truth. If a company's not expressing a level of diversity, what's happening is they're minimizing their chances of getting top talent. Of course, health is great. Paid time off is great. 401k, you'll see all of these things when you see job descriptions. But again, I implore you to add in an inclusion statement and watch how things change in your recruiting process of recruiting diverse talent, not just getting them, but absolutely maintaining them. And isn't that the goal? Okay. All right, you guys, I really want to say this. Everyone has bias. Newsflash. We all have some sort of bias. We all have some sort of bias. And I say this so many times because here's the thing. There's not a cookie cutter way to get rid of it, but here are some ways that can help you in developing what's next. But really quick, I want to show you a graphic really quick. So here's bias, right? So we didn't think when you look at this picture, we see this doctor, right? But let's look at his picture on the right. Oftentimes, we never know what people look like underneath. And this picture here is saying to us, we want to make sure that we're thinking the best and really acknowledging our biases, okay? And I'm going to give you some tips on how to do those things. I just wanted to show this picture. This is always something that I show it by itself first, but I wanted to show it together so that you guys can see that. But here's the thing worth a thousand words, right? Think about all the ways that we can really train our mind to now think in a different perspective, okay? Here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to forget about what's important. Question your assumptions. And what I mean by that is this. If you're feeling a certain way and you think a certain way, right away, acknowledge it. Acknowledge it and then pivot to reset it. Speak up. We want to make sure that when we see bias being 
in the workplace, all around us that we're speaking up. And oftentimes we don't, we just kind of go with the flow because that's how it's been. But I implore you to speak up, hold yourself accountable and as well as hold organizations accountable, hold your teams responsible, hold them accountable. Here's the other thing, disrupt and default. Get away from going with the norm. Get to a place where you say, here's what we're looking for and that's it. But then also understanding that we all have bias. That's the one thing that I want you to get today. Every one of us has bias, but it's up to us to hold ourselves accountable. Now, here's another tool that I want to give you if you're not familiar with the Harvard Implicit Bias Test. All you have to do is go out to Google and Google it, and it'll come right up. But what it does is it measures our attitudes, our beliefs that people may be unwilling or unable to report. And here's the truth of the matter. When we think about everything and understand that we all have bias, this is an opportunity for us to see things that we didn't know about, okay? So I'll leave that for just a second so you guys can write that down. If you have not taken the assessment, I've taken it now probably six or seven times, and I have bias. Every one of us has bias, okay? All right, I'm going to keep going. We're doing good on time, too. Okay, so here's my, my, my point I want you to think about. It's up to us to start taking action now. The time is way beyond for us to take action. Every one of us has a specific role to play. But here's the thing, there's no cookie cutter response. But what there is, is there has to be action. And what I mean by saying there's no cookie cutter response, every company may not do it the same. Every employer may not do it the same. And it's okay. Here's the thing, once you get an idea of what you can do to leverage your company, it's up to you to speak up, to show up, and then follow up because here's the thing, we'll get ideas, we'll say things, we'll come up with these great things and then nothing happens. We wanna make sure that we're following up, that we're speaking up and that we're taking action. The only way things will change is if we take action. So I wanna implore you right now to take action. Here's a big thing that I want us to look at. When it comes to our policies, if we've had these policies in place for 50 years, there's some chances that they're excluding people. There's some chances that there's some bias. There's some chances that the wording is off. There are chances that those things are set up that way. But when you take an opportunity to ingrain diversity, yes, diversity, inclusion, equity. There's another one that's been added a framework called JEDI, J-E-D-I, which is justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And when you think about that, that framework and you put that into your policies and you ingrain it in everything that you do from the top of the organization, get the buy-in at the top and take it down, what happens is it'll start to change the tone after you do that, but it must be ingrained from start to finish. And when you think of how you ingrain those things, you really want to look at your policies from a perspective of the language, the verbiage. And when you break it down, getting a team of individuals, diverse team that can look at those policies and really listen to the verbiage, read them out loud sometimes. Sometimes they've been ingrained for 20 or 50 years, and we have never even read them out loud. But when you look at those policies, really for what they are, and truly uproot what's there, Put in some new verbiage, include your inclusion statement there in your policy. What it does is it allows you to then now start to think from that framework in every single piece of not only just the job description and the policies, but into your company as well. And then I talked a little bit about the job postings. When you think of the job postings, here's the thing there's often words that are in job descriptions that leave people out. And then the other thing about your job postings, where are you posting them at? Are you posting them with the same places that you've been? Or are you tapping on the shoulders of organizations that could bring in Hispanic serving individuals? When you think about HSI, Hispanic serving institutions, when you think about these diverse places where you can get individuals, 
oftentimes I'm seeing that companies are not using their community resources. Here local in the Missouri area, we have places for tech companies like Launch Code. If you're not familiar with Launch Code, what Launch Code does is it gives organizations an opportunity to pull from candidates that they have trained in software development, trained in technology. There's so many things that they've done to prepare these individuals for work. Now they partner with organizations like MasterCard, Washington University, to really make sure that they're giving individuals the skills and it's a nonprofit so they connect with organizations to make sure that they can funnel you down those individuals. And we're in such a tech day and age that getting connected with organizations that do things like that. Urban League is another organization that we can connect with to pull diverse candidates. Urban League will post your position free of charge. Urban League will go in and they will make sure that you have the individuals by posting your position. Missouri Career Center is another place that you can use that they work for you. Again, there's no charge for organizations to post with them. And then here's the other thing with places like Missouri Career Center is you get an extra liaison that works with you to make sure that you have a job posting there. They weed out candidates. You tell them what you're looking for. What they do is they even allow organizations to come on site and recruit there. Then it's an opportunity to build relationships with those entities. But again, I implore you to use community resources. Harrisville State University is right here in Missouri. We have so many amazing SLU, UMSL. We have so many organizations, WashU, that can really make sure that we're getting diverse candidates. It's all about relationship building. We want to make sure at the end of the day that we're building relationships because, again, when there's a relationship, organizations like Launch Code, Missouri Career Center, Urban League, when you build that relationship, what will happen is those entities will automatically funnel you candidates and then you get an opportunity to get it the match that you're looking for, the diverse candidate to build those teams, to maintain those teams, but even getting involved. The other thing companies can do is go and volunteer at those places because as you volunteer, you're saying to that organization, we believe in what you're doing. As companies, what we can do is interview, mock interviews, helping with building up candidates experience. If your company is specifically in technology, you can do those things. Whatever it is that your specialty is, I, I promise, there's organizations like Launch Code and Urban League that need your expertise and need you to come alongside them to then make sure that every one of the things that we're doing in these companies, in these spaces, are representative of all the individuals, not only that we serve, but the communities that we live in. And then I talked earlier about the personality test. Again, True Colors is a personality test. And as a team, one of the things that we've recently done with True Colors is I have a team of 13. And one of the things that we've done is every one of those individuals took the personality test. And now we have those, every time that we have our presentations, we put up what those top ones that we are. We put up our true colors so we can see how people work. Everyone has different differences when it comes to how they show up, how they present, how they work, how they connect. But those personality tests and knowing everyone on your team my, 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 it is such a game changer to know that you have a person that's analytical on your team, a person who's all about the numbers, the person who can come and move the needle, the person who thinks futuristically, all those things. So the strength finder as well is another way that you do that. But I want to make sure that you use those things to really build things up. The other thing I want you to think about Make diversity everyone's responsibility, not just your diversity person on your team, not just the HR team, but every single person within your organization. Make it everyone's responsibility. Here's the other thing. Diversify at all levels. Oftentimes we'll see top down. At the top level, there's no diversity. Then there's some diversity when it comes to support staff. Think about that. As you lead these organizations, having leadership that's, representat that's representative of all the ones that we, all the individuals we support, 
Understand that represent, representation, I don't know why I'm struggling with that. Know that representation matters. Know that representation matters. And as you look at diversifying at all levels, ingrain diversity in every facet of the company, every facet, not just the job description, not just the posting, but do it in everything that you do, your day-to-day -day functions. You want to think of diversity at every level. And then here's the other thing. Develop ongoing education for your team. We cannot, as organizations, think we can come in with this program, right? I keep hearing that. We can't come in with this one and done and think that people are going to get it. This needs to be something ongoing that happens. It does. There's no way that we can even understand if we, if we do it one time. I can never in my <laughs> life, in my career, just say I'm going to read something once and now I know it forever. No. We want to make sure that we ingrain it in everything that we do and make sure that you develop ongoing opportunities to educate our teams. There's no way we can think that with all of these systemic issues that have plagued our society, educational systems, there's no way that we can think that, okay, we do it once and it's done, or that we think that people just get it. Oftentimes, I've seen that these terms and these things are completely new to teams, and it's great, but you want to make sure that you're doing it ongoing. And then acknowledging different cultures, right? As you acknowledge cultures of everyone that we work with, that we build community with, what it does is it connects people. It builds loyalty, and that's what this is all about, building loyalty. And as you build loyalty, that's exactly how you maintain those individuals that you recruit. Because if you're recruiting those individuals and there's nothing that's set in, there's nothing that's ongoing, we won't keep them. And the retention numbers are through the roof, and we want to make sure that we stay away from that. Okay? And again, today I talked about inclusion, right? I talked about creating that space, the safe space, I'll say, this brave space. Let's try and make sure that we create brave space because at the end of the day, we all want to show up and be courageous in our spaces, but it, it's going to take disrupting the norm. It's going to take breaking down the, the norms. It's going to take doing things different. And as we do these things every single day, what it will do is it will start to change the culture. But here's a news flash. It's not going to happen overnight. There's no cookie cutter way to do it. The truth of the matter is we get an opportunity to build, to build, to build, and it's up to us to do that. And then we talked about bias, and then I talked about taking action. Again, uprooting the systemic policies and practices within organizations is something amazing that we want to make sure that we do. We want to make sure that we do it because as we do that, we then get an opportunity to explore the possibilities of innovation, problem solving, being winning brands and companies, and then getting to a space where we're the leader in our spaces. Wouldn't it be amazing if when we see the leaders in those organizations that our organization is at the top, that our companies are at the top, that we're at the forefront, that we're leading the way? There's so many amazing companies that are doing some great things today that I implore you to continue to build this journey, but again, to take action and not to allow things just to sit and do nothing. We want to make sure we're taking action, okay? So I want to leave some space for questions, and again, I'm, I'm going to come back to this slide really quick. I want to just give you guys some more resources. All some right. of the resources. Go ahead, Keisha. Uh-huh. So some of the resources that I want to make sure that you have is, again, the Harvard Implicit Bias Test. That's a big one. There's a couple books that I want to offer you guys as well. Blind Spot, A Hidden Bias of Good People. That's an amazing book by Mazarin Banaji. Amazing book. Diversity Inc. offers The Failed Promise of a Billion Dollar Business by Pamela Nurek. Newkirk, <laughs> and then White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism by Robin D'Angelo, and then How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi. But again, I want to make sure that you guys have these resources. I'll leave these up so that you have those. And as you build the work, know that it's an opportunity to build and go to the next level. 
but then also that there's resources out here for you. There's another organization through the YWCA. They offer Witnessing Whiteness. It's a program that they offer for organizations as well as individuals to go in and really get an understanding of all of the systemic things that have been in place and how we as companies can build diversity, equity, and inclusion, justice as well as belonging and appreciation. All right, you guys, so I will pause right there and see. I'm gonna, again, allow some space for individuals to ask any questions that may be burning right now. All right, thank you so much, Keisha. Uh, we'll give everybody You're a welcome. If you want to uh, use your chat or questions function box to type in any questions or takeaways or feedback, um, thank you all for attending today. You know, us at higher level, we have worked with uh, Keisha several times on different company and corporate trainings, and we have walked away um, with just great insights and really helping not only grow us as a company, but definitely developing um, our team into um, just recognizing opportunities and, you know, being open-minded like we talked about at the start of the presentation. So thank you for that, Keisha, and thank you for uh, hosting this for us this morning. You're very welcome. Such an honor and such a joy. And again, it keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps going. It keeps going. We can't let it be a one and done. We want to make sure that we keep going. I appreciate it, Erin. So we have some kudos coming in. Everybody's saying great job, Keisha. Um, no question. Thank you. You know, everybody, we will be sending out the recording presentation if you would like to share that um, or kind of look back at different things you'd want to revisit um and go from there so uh keisha someone is asking for i don't know if you have your specific company name and contact information on a slide but i do let me go back let's there pull that up and, so they can see it and so they have your info can you guys see that slide yes okay perfect and then yeah your uh your company name mrs keith speaks LLC. Mm -hmm. And you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find my website, mrskeespeaks.com. Any questions, you can send me an email. You can send me any way that you like to connect. I would love to connect and answer any questions to build, to really just provide even just a listening opportunity to see how you as an organization are already doing things, or maybe you're wanting tips and tools. That's absolutely something that I'm open for as well. All right, great. And, um, you know, that wraps up our presentation for today. Um, I do want to give a quick um, kind of shout out. We are doing a, a very important webinar coming up on Wednesday, May 12th. We are actually partnering with our employment law attorney, um, Philip Lading with Sanford Phoenix. And he is going to be um, talking about and answering questions regarding the new Illinois law that protects workers with criminal records. So um, feel free to email me specifically at hello at higherlevel.com. Um, Want to make sure you get registered for that if this is relevant to you. Um, but definitely all good things coming up. So everybody have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Have an amazing day on purpose.